Hello, today we'll be talking about two experiments, one done by Nuremberg and Matei and the other being done by Nuremberg and Letter. These experiments will be explaining genetic coding and how their findings revolutionized the world of genetics. Before I go into detail, I first want to define what genetic coding actually is. It is a set of rules by which information encoded in genetic material is translated into proteins by living cells. Prior to the studies done by Nuremberg and Matei and later Letter, there was some knowledge of genetic coding. Francis Crick believed that two bases are not enough to code for all amino acids, but also believed that three may be too many. No one knew how many amino acids were there to be coded for, until Crick and Sidney Brenner later determined that there are 20 amino acids and 64 code words. With there being little knowledge of genetic coding, Nuremberg, who we see here on the right, and Matei, who is on the left, decided to further dive into RNA sequencing on May 15, 1961. Their experiment included the use of E. coli cell extract, which contained all components required for protein synthesis. They first wanted to remove all the other DNA, and so they did that by adding a synthetic RNA that was composed of uracil and DNAs. 20 test tubes were used, and only one contained a single carbon-14 radioactive amino acid, the other 19 being unlabeled. Here's an image showing the 20 test tubes. In each trial, they tested either poly-U, poly-A, poly-C, or poly-G. Their experiment allowed for several findings to be made about the sequencing. Poly-U codes for phenylalanine, poly-C codes for proline, poly-A codes for lysine, and poly-G never worked, and here's an image depicting that. Again in 1964, Nuremberg conducted another experiment, this time with letter. Their experiment had various combinations of mRNA passing through a filter that had ribosomes and 20 charged tRNAs, one being radioactive. The mixture later was to be passed through a filter that would trap ribosome. Those that did not bind fell through the filter and once that was done, they would then examine the filter and check to see if the paper was radioactive. And if they are, that meant the trinucleotide coded for the amino acid. Here is an image depicting their experimental design. You can see here the filter, the mixture, and the ribosomes. Their findings allowed for 61 codons to be deciphered the other three being from the previous experiment, totaling up to 64 codons classifying into 20 amino acids. Of the 64 codons, three do not code for any amino acids but represent stop signals. Below is the universal genetic code chart, and you may or may not be familiar with this, but these are all the findings given to us by Nuremberg, Matei, and later Letter. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it resourceful. Once again, here are all the sources that I used to create this video. Thank you!